<laughs> okay, thanks, Shelly, for all the technical support. Um, I'm very happy to be here uh, to present this update on behalf of the uh, Keck Science Steering Committee. And I guess I have to hit that button to update the slide. So for those of you who are new members of the Keck community, I thought it would be good to start with just an overview of what the SSC is and what the SSC does. Um, the SSC's charter is uh, available on the Keck Observatory website if you'd like to read about this in more detail. But the SSC contributes to observatory governance by advising the CARA board and the Keck director on scientific capabilities and productivity of the observatory. The SSC meets four times a year and reports to the CARA board three times per year. And the SSC's activities include helping to develop the scientific strategic plan, which has been a major focus of our activities over the past year, evaluating priorities for new instrumentation, AO capabilities and upgrades, advising the CARA board and the observatory on instrument development and operations, advising on observing policies, consulting on aspects of the budget that address science priorities, and representing the interests of you, the scientific community, to the CARA board and to the observatory. Who's on the SSC? Um, there are nine voting members of the SSC, um, representing uh, three from Caltech, three from the University of California, two from NASA and one from the University of Hawaii. And we'd like to extend a special welcome to Joshua Schleter, who's a new NASA SSC representative as of this summer. And we're looking forward to welcoming one additional new NASA member later this fall. There are ex officio members, uh, including the director and chief scientist of the observatory, Hilton and John, and the uh, directors of the respective partner uh, observatories and institutes. And I'd like to also extend a special welcome to Bruce McIntosh, who's just joined the SSC in this role. Uh, and there are additional non-voting members representing Swinburne, Notre Dame, Yale, and Northwestern. And I would especially like to thank the outgoing NASA SSC members, Tom Green and Veronimo Villanueva, who've served for several years each and who really contributed uh, outstanding service to the SS SSC during their terms. And also to Claire Max, who uh, served as a member of the SSC as UCO director for the past several years and Connie Rockusey, who served in the in in interim capacity over the past year. Sorry, the hour. Yeah. Okay, so uh, for the rest of this talk, I'd like to focus on one of the SSC's most important activities every year, which is the annual white paper uh, and phase A proposal review process. Um, as uh, we normally do, proposals are submitted in June and reviewed by the SSC at our summer meeting. And there are different categories of proposals that include concept studies for new instruments and AO capabilities, mini grant requests for workshop support or science community building activities, requests for permission to proceed toward submission of proposals to funding agencies, and the largest proposals are the phase A proposals for design work on new instruments and AO capabilities. For this year's call, the total funding available to distribute was 450K. The total funding requested by all proposals was uh, just short of 800K. And both of those numbers have been fairly flat over the past few cycles of uh, this proposal process. The SSC reviews proposals and ranks them, recommends funding allocations, and then final decisions are made by the CARA board. And I should note that not all of the proposals that we receive are directly requesting funding. Some proposals are requesting permission to proceed with work that can be supported by other funding sources, or some proposals are re uh, requesting SSC endorsement to submit uh, proposals to other funding agencies. So first, I'd like to uh, so I'd like to go through uh, the list of proposals that were endorsed to move forward by the SSC, starting with the large Phase A proposals. The first is LRIS two, led by Chuck Seidel and Brad Holden. LRIS two is a concept for a complete replacement for LRIS to replace the workhorse capabilities of one of the oldest uh, venerable Keck instruments with higher throughput, better flexure control, and wavefront sensing that could work with GLAO. Um, and the work plan for this proposal includes work on optical design, flexure compensations uh, design, packaging, and the te telescope interface, 
guiding and low order wavefront sensing and studies of options for different diffractive elements and different uh, possible options for slip masks. Uh, the next phase A proposal uh, that was endorsed to proceed uh, in this year's review was developing the concept for a GLAO facility at Keck, led by Phil Hins of UCO. And this is a design effort uh, aimed towards developing an adaptive secondary mirror and GLAO capability for Keck 1. The design is based on using hybrid variable reluctance actuators, which are a new kind of actuator for adaptive secondary mirrors that uh, have much lower power requirements and a variety of other great advantages over conventional voice coil actuators for ASMs. And the work that will be supported includes development of GLAO architecture and science requirements, conceptual design work on the laser launch, advancing the ASM assembly design, including work on the face sheet fabrication methods and bonding, support structure materials and design, and uh, work on uh, uh, different options for the actuator count, developing the uh, GLAO wavefront sensing strategy for ELRIS-2 and MOSFIRE, and planning for uh, mirror cleating and recoding. And then a third phase A proposal, is uh, Phobos led by Kevin Bundy. Uh, Phobos is a plan for a massively multiplexed spectrograph with 1700 fibers across a 20 arc minute uh, field of view covering the full optical wavelength range. And the work plan for this year focuses uh, most specifically on advancing the readiness of the Starbug fiber positioners, including design of a multi Starbug module and packaging of multi fiber uh, I, uh, integral field units. For the smaller white paper proposals, yes, okay. Um, uh, uh, the first is a proposal on designing architectures for visible light AO led by Jessica Liu. And this is a plan to carry out concept studies and developing science requirements for a future visible light AO capability for Keck. The work plan includes developing science requirements and performance budgets and evaluating uh, visible light AO architecture options, including looking at uh, trades between either incremental upgrades to the existing uh, AO hardware versus a completely new facility, looking at uh, uh, capabilities that either would or would not work with an adaptive secondary mirror and studying the possible operating wavelength range, developing laser launch concept and looking at uh, uh, cost estimation for such a facility. Another project is called Viper, the Visible Imaging Polarimeter for Extreme Resolution. This is a concept study for a new instrument led by Max Miller Blanchard. Um, to develop a camera for visible wavelength AO observations that would go behind the future Haka high order deformable mirror on Keck 2. The concept would include dual band imaging and polarimetry as well as interferometric modes, and it would support a broad variety of science cases ranging from solar system and exoplanets through galaxies and AGN. Um, another project is Redwoods led by Benjamin Girard. This is a project to upgrade the Keck 2 pyramid wavefront sensor to support high contrast imaging and to improve the AO correction to NERC 2 and in the future to scales and improve throughput to KPIC um, for science cases that are uh, focused primarily on giant exoplanets and circumstellar disk observations. And finally, um, there's a project on technology maturation for high contrast exoplanet science led by Rebecca Jensen Clem. And uh, this project is focused on a workshop that will be organized for discussion and planning of developing new AO simulation tools and concept development for a Keck 2 AO fed instrument that would be designed specifically to support high contrast technology maturation at visible and IR uh, wavelengths. So that's a quick rundown of the projects that were uh, endorsed to proceed as a result of this year's proposal process. And before I close, I just wanted to say a few words about the, um, the SSC's instrument uh, uh, funding uh, environment um, uh, that, uh, that we encounter every year as part of this proposal process. The SSC's budget for this instrument design process 
for the past few years has been uh, pretty stable at about 450K, but that's very restrictive and limiting in terms of the scope of projects that we would really like to support and to support the range of projects that uh, the Keck community would uh, like to put forward. And a much higher level of support is really needed in the future if we want to bring uh, the full portfolio of ambitious instrument projects that uh, the Keck community is considering to PDR level and to uh, ultimately enable submission of competitive proposals to funding agencies for full construction funding. So the SSC considers it a very high priority to advocate for a much higher level of instrument design funding for future cycles of this process. And specifically, as part of our strategic planning discussions, we've endorsed the concept of a future annual instrument design budget of at least $2 million a year as an important priority in order to support an instrument incubation process that's consistent with our community's aspirations for uh, Keck's future instrumentation capabilities. So uh, I will close there and I'm happy to take questions at this point. Thanks. I'm on the SSC, so I get to ask Aaron questions all the time. And several of your SSC representatives are here. Raise your hand, SSC representatives, so everybody can talk to SSC members during the breaks or over meals. Nothing left. Okay. How do you achieve a third bullet? Um, the, uh, the way we achieve that is... Um, that, that's a, oh, can you repeat the question? Uh, the, the question is, how do we achieve that third bullet of raising this annual instrument design budget to $2 million a year? Um, from the SSC's point of view, that is our strategic goal, the implementation of which is really the charge of the CARA board and the observatory management. We believe that it will be feasible to do that, but I would gladly deflect this yeah. question to management and board members. We're thinking of selling the <laughs> it's it's uh, uh, a big part of the other on the ground. Thank you for that. Question. The uh, the uh, a big part of the strategic plan, the part that's not the scientific part, is to address this, and specifically it's around partnership issues and the possibility of of bringing new partners into the mix. So I think that's that's the short answer. Just oh, I should mention, you know, that I did touch on this. The other two big areas of growth are everything around Monica leading up to the lease, which is a significant increase in our in our costs, uh, uh, or will be a significant increase in our cost. And then the infrastructure is old, and so we continue to spend more on that. When you say bringing new partners, is that equivalent to saying exchanging nice for money? Uh, I am. I have to be very careful how I phrase my answer here. But let me put it this way: um, in there's a big change coming on Monaco, and there's significantly more significantly more funds required to operate there. Will be. Uh, the way we've, of course, the, our access in the past has been conditioned on providing observing time to the University of Hawaii. And so that's in the mix. Wow. Okay, on that, maybe we shall move on. Uh, so our next speaker uh, will be a remote uh, presentation by Richard.